Praise God. This is a wonderful day. I'm excited about preaching the word today. We've got a mighty word. We're going to continue in this idolatry in the church series. And this is part three. We might have a part four next week. I mean, God has just given us so much information and is blessing a lot of people. But we want to hear from you out there. Praise God. Ryan, come on and greet us, will you please? Oh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Good morning. <laughs> oh, what a fine day it's been. <laughs> Raining, a little chilly, but hey, we're alive, we're kicking. God has blessed us with another day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we give greetings to you and to your lovely family, and may God bless you mightily, exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Hallelujah. Praise oh, God. Let's ask good. Dustina to come on and give us a greeting. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Good morning. Uh, everything's going well here. Uh, it's beautiful and sunny today and slightly cool and windy. And my house looks like a wreck right now. <laughs> Decorating for Christmas, so... Got all the cooking done. Now it's time for decorating. Joy, joy. <laughs> God, God. It's getting ready. It's getting ready for Christmas time now. Okay. Yes, yes. It just it feels like just yesterday. I just put everything up. It's just come and went and come back so fast. Uh, I'm just going way too quick for me. <laughs> well, praise God as you get ready for Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. 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 So we pray that God will continue to bless you and your family. All right. We'll be talking with you. Let's have a shout out from Karen. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Well, it is leading here, and they canceled our our church. I'm usually I'm usually in church at this time, um, and I, I actually watch everything on the archives. I don't I don't miss your church services, um, but I'm usually actually in in the brick and mortar church at this time, but they they canceled us so because we're we're getting ice here. Okay, <laughs> so I, so I, I get to be with you guys today. Well, Yay. Good, 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 good. Well, we're glad to have you with us, and I invited Pastor Noel to join us today. Hope he will, and um, we pray that God will continue blessing you all and 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 use you mightily up there in Pennsylvania. All right, God Thank bless you, you Karen, and God, God bless, bless you as well. Okay, and everyone else who's on live and those who are listening by way of uh, the recording, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord, ladies and gentlemen. He is Lord. I can't understand all these people trying to uh, worship other gods and other things. Jesus is Lord. Hey, uh, <coughs> we uh, want to invite Jackie Fisher to come and, and greet us. We are Jackie has asked if she can give a testimony about the dreams that she's having. So we're going to ask her to do that. So we want you to listen. And, and you know, Jackie Fisher is the quietest woman on the face of the planet uh, next to Jackie Carter. But Jackie Fisher is very quiet. We're going to ask her to come and, and share with us what the Lord has laid on her heart. We want you to listen carefully. Jackie Fisher, come and greet us. Okay, good morning, Pastor Carter, and good morning, church. How is everyone today? I hope you're blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and highly favored of the Lord today. And, yes, I just sent Pastor uh, earlier a little email about some uh, dreams that I had had. And I didn't think that they had gotten to him, but <laughs> evidently they did get through. But it's about the Lord's return very soon. And that's all I can say right now. It's imminent. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's all you can say right now? Yeah. He's coming back very soon? He's coming very soon. I believe that, Jackie. If anyone has any ideas, I have had a lot of dreams about people putting on their clothes, getting their clothes ready. I don't know if that means anything or what, but maybe you all know. Okay, okay. Jackie Fisher just shared with us about she's having dreams. God has given her dreams 
about he's coming back again soon. That's all she can re reveal right now. And I praise God <laughs> that she's wise in that she's listen, listening and, to and obeying the Holy Spirit and only giving what the Lord says, share with others. You know, some people get dreams and they try to make a whole theology out of it. And then they produce YouTube uh, videos and all this. And then they get way out there and they get lost and get goofed up. Uh, but Jackie is sharing, and, and maybe next week she'll have more to share. But she also invited us uh, to share anything that we want to add to what she's getting. You know, the Bible says in the last days God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall, have, shall prophesy. Your, your young men shall have uh, uh, dreams. And, 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 and uh, your, your elders will have visions. And so we thank God, and God is true in doing this. And, and Jackie is sharing. She's excited about her dreams, and we'll hear more from her. Anyone want to share anything the Lord's been putting on your heart before we get into the Word? Thank you, Jackie Fisher. Oh, you're welcome. God bless you. Anyone else want to share? I don't see anybody right now. Okay, okay. You know, when, when God gives dreams to the quietest person on the face of the earth, you know something is happening. Something is about to break loose. Uh, Jackie Fisher <laughs> is one of the quietest people I have ever met in my life. Uh, next to my, my wife, Jackie. Jackie Carter is quiet. You may think she's talkative. She gets, she's talkative when she gets on, on, on the camera, but she is very, very quiet. Uh, uh, and uh, these two ladies are quiet, but God has given them dreams and visions. God is working through them and moving mightily, and we are so blessed to have them. We'll be hearing more from Jackie Fisher. Uh, in fact, I'm going to ask Jackie in a moment to come and read the Word of God for us. So, Jackie, if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We want to look at the four, first 14 verses. We'll be doing that in a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 14. Praise God. Praise God. Up north where Karen and Ryan live, uh, and Wes and, and, and the, uh, others up in Pennsylvania, they're having snow and sleet. And they say, Ryan, that the Lehigh Valley is going to get a lot of snow and ice. So you all be careful. And if you have to go out on the road in your 18-wheeler, Ryan, we pray that God uh, uh keep you safe and that you will travel uh, wisely and, and under the protection of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Ryan? Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And while we have you on online with us, uh, how about leading us in prayer, my brother? Thank you. Sure will. Sure will. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all mankind and defeating death and defeating the tomb. Lord, we just want to thank you for making another day today, and we're going to rejoice in it. Lord, we also uh, want to thank you for giving Pastor Carter the courage and the wisdom and the knowledge to give us your word again today. And we want to bless this online ministry and everybody that's in here today. And Lord, we just we just want to praise you and and give you all the thanks. And we want to bless the nation. We want to bless the nation of Israel. We want to bless our our military. <clears throat> and Lord, we also want you to come down and heal the sick. And hopefully, hopefully people will open their eyes and open their hearts to you, Lord, so that you know all these souls can go to heaven with you and walk them streets, walk them, walk them golden streets of heaven with you, Lord. <clears throat> so, Lord, we just want to say we thank you, we honor you, we praise you. And love you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's Ryan Trogler up in uh, <coughs> Marysville, Pennsylvania. He's a prayer warrior and a vital part of the Back to Basics Ministries. And we thank God for you. And uh, I see where um, Karen has put in the chat, well, that she's got a burden on her heart about the lost souls and about sharing the gospel. And Karen, I just want to concur with you 
and 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 add this uh before I went to sleep last night, I mean my heart was so heavy, my heart was so heavy, and the Lord said, "What is this heaviness that you're carrying?" I said, "Lord, I got I have a burden for the souls, I've got a burden for lost souls, and then Karen, I said, God, I've got a heavy burden for the church for the fact that many people in the church have been deceived deceived i've got a burden for them they practice a form of religion and many do not know you and 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 then lord i, I said lord i've got a heavy burden for the fact that they love uh, the excitement of the church the choir the singing and and the church makes them feel good but they don't know you karen i shared with god that's a heaviness on my heart and 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 my my main my main burden right now is America. I've got a burden for America, uh, the lost souls in America. Even though many people go to church, they hear the word of God, but America is having is going through something, and I've got a burden for the many preachers who are preaching, but they're preaching their own kind of gospel. They're preaching their own form of gospel, which is contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're preaching a political gospel. And, and Karen, my heart is grieved and burdened because of the millions of people, and I'm including in this number big known, big name, well-known preachers who are afraid to preach the gospel, but are in the political pockets of these leaders and they're teaching their churches things uh, they're promoting you know make America great but they're not promoting the gospel and Americans have been deceived they're being deceived and so we're going to talk about idolatry in the church again uh, uh, I couldn't sleep well last night uh, because this whole thing about idolatry in the church. Uh, and, and I said, well, Lord, a lot of people probably will hate me after this sermon on, on tomorrow, but I've got to preach what thus saith the Lord. So God said, well, don't worry about it. You don't live on likes and, and friends and who friends you and who likes you. You preach what I give you to preach. So, Karen, that's what's on my heart today. And um, and uh, online church, that's what's on my heart I'll burden and I share your burden Karen I share your burden brothers and sisters I share your burden Dustina about this apostasy and this deception and this delusion and and um, God said in Romans chapter 1 I will send you a strong and he said in first Peter I will send you strong delusion that you will believe the lie and we have been deceived by deception delusion and unclean spirits but but God can use this church and churches uh, pastor Noel if you're on with us and and Karen and 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 Ryan and everyone else God can use us to take a stand for holiness and righteousness not political because a lot a lot of people hate my guts because I do not preach political messages I do not preach uh, uh, what the Republicans want me to preach. I do not preach what the Democrats want me to preach. I preach what thus saith the Lord. And that rattles people at the very core of their being. But God did not call me to be a Republican or a Democrat. God called me out of sin, ladies and gentlemen, set my feet on a solid rock, and establish my goings and therefore I'm going to be true to God and it, it just burdens my heart to see how the church is being blindsided being deceived Karen I was reading today a pastor in Florida a pastor in Florida Karen he's the pastor of a large congregation and he is blaming the Jews he's blaming the Jews for all the problems in America Karen, that's the same thing Adolf Hitler did back in the 1930s. He blamed the Jews. And the thing is, Karen, people believe what Adolf Hitler said. And before long, you had 12 million Jews put to death because of racist pastors going along with a racist leader who wanted to build a wall around Germany and put the Jews in incarceration and almost wiped out the race of people. This kind of uh, uh, 
demagoguery, as they call it, this racism, this political preaching, and, 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 it's, and it's being uh, uh, substantiated by a lot of well-known preachers. You'll be surprised the number of well-known preachers who want to see a wall built, uh, that wall built on, in, on the southern border to keep the Mexicans out, the Guatemalans out, the Costa Ricans out, the Hondurans out, and, and keep the Haitians out and the Caribbeans out. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's call this a call the way it is. They don't mind seeing white folks coming in from Europe and from other parts of the world, but, but people of color, they don't want them in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is an abomination. And we're talking about idolatry. This is idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. We are living in an idolatrous nation, an idolatrous nation that is uh, denouncing people of color, and, uh, that preaches, a, it's, it's, and, and this kind, this form of Christianity that we're seeing in our churches is racist, it's full of hatred, and it's divisive. And this man in Florida ought to be silenced. He ought to be silenced. Somebody ought to... Uh, stick him with a needle full of Novocaine uh, in his lips. Silence him. That if he tries to talk, he bites his lips and he cuts his lips into pieces. That's the kind of rhetoric that uh, caused millions of Jews to be killed in Germany, millions of Jews to be put to death in Russia, and that kind of rhetoric is being preached in American churches today. And 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 and, and there are churches they want white. Only a white only leadership, white only government, white only president, uh, white only governors, white only this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, God made other colors, and God and, and this whole ethnicity thing it stinks. It stinks at the very core. This racial ethnicity ethnicity thing stinks. Jesus died on the cross for all people. All people. And it's time for a serious, honest, sincere, bona fide Christians to stand up, Karen, and, and get a burden on their heart for all people, for all souls, regardless of race, creed, uh, uh, texture of your hair, color of your skin, or what side of the tracks people live in. That's why Jesus died on the cross for all people. I don't preach my message but uh, we're going to go ahead and ask Car um, Jackie Fisher, if she will, Jackie Fisher, if she'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 14. Then I'll calm down while Jackie's reading. Okay, good morning, uh, Pastor Carter, and good morning, yes. church. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 14, entitled, The Idolatry in the Wilderness. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all of these things happened unto them for an example and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. 
but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 14. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget, forgot verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. That's the end. Praise God. Praise God. Jackie Fisher, thank you. Thank you so much for reading the gospel. And uh, I hope you don't mind if I said you're the quietest person on the face of the earth, but I still believe it. But <laughs> thank you for reading that word. You know, Jackie, you know, my friends, <laughs> there are millions of people in this nation alone and in other nations add millions more who do not read the Bible. Jackie, they do not know the Bible. They do not read the Bible. There are millions of people in nations who don't have Bibles. They are depending on preachers to preach a word for them. The sad thing about America is this, Karen Herzog. There are millions of people who have Bibles but won't read the Bibles, and they take everything they hear on Sunday as the gospel. Now, everything being said on Sunday morning from the pulpit is not the gospel. And so, and so it, it behooves us to study the word of God for ourselves. I'd like you all to invite people to join us on Wednesdays as we start up again on January 8th. Join us as we go through the Bible. There should be no excuse for anyone in America who can read uh, no excuse for them to not know their Bible because we offer, and many other churches offer, free Bible studies and, and, and free without the, without the politicizing, without the idol, uh, making idolatrous uh, statements and, and teachings wrong, teaching wrong uh, 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 kerygma. Uh, the Word of God will explain itself if you read the Bible and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and you ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, God will explain the Bible, or God will lead you to an anointed Bible teacher who will teach the Word of God and not put their own twist or their own take on it. I thank God for calling me to be a Bible preacher, Bible teacher. Everybody won't listen to me. There are people who won't listen to me because I am not a uh, uh, of their culture or of their ethnicity. And the sad thing is there are a lot of God's servants who have doors slammed in their face because they do not meet up with the, the, the cultural uh, 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 persuasion of, of, of the people who want to learn more. But if we put those things aside and put the politics aside and look at the Word of God, God can teach us all. And so Jackie Fisher just read a powerful passage of scripture, a very powerful passage of scripture, and, and, and um, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. Ladies and gentlemen, this church in Corinth was so, so reeking in idolatry. I mean, idolatry was dripping off them, and they worship idols. They had all kinds of idols, but we're going to take a look at today, ladies and gentlemen, at a whole form of idolatry that you're not aware of, and many people in the church are not aware of. So Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. They were all together under that cloud of glory that led them through the wilderness and were all baptized into, unto Moses into the cloud and in the sea and did all eat that same spiritual meat. Everybody heard the same thing from God but they had different interpretations of what God says. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled people hearing the word of God and taking off on their own tangents with the word of God. You, uh, when I was in seminary, I went to a Baptist seminary, and, and they told me if you have two Baptists, together. You have at least three opinions. Where there are two Baptists, there are three opinions. And I believe that, ladies and gentlemen, because people can hear the same word of God and get a different 
interpretation and 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 you get two or three different interpretations but the bible tells me there is one interpretation of the bible peter writes that in his let one of his letters there's only one interpretation of scripture and so that is why we need to be led by the holy spirit but the sad thing is karen there are so many people who depend on their pastors, and Pastor Noel can tell you this, they are, and, and, and they take everything that come out of those pastors' mouths. Now look, what if your pastor is, 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 is uh, hooked on pornography, as we saw a very famous pastor fall about 20 years ago. He was hooked on pornography. Pornography governed everything he said. That demon of pornography governed his whole life, and when he fell, a mega church fell, and many people fell with him because his God was not the God he, uh, uh, of the scripture. His God was a God of pornography. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to make sure that the person you're sitting under, the person you're following, the person you've spent all your time building up, the per person you spent all your tithe money helping to build, Many of you spend your time building the church, building the ministry, giving to the poor, and, 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 and there are people who worship uh, pastors. Everything coming out of that pastor's mouth, they take it as the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful because that is idolatry. That is idolatry. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at uh, over half of this nation, half of this nation is following pastors who are promoting an ungodly leader in the White House, who's a liar, who's a deceiver, he's a whoremonger, he's a hater, he's a racist, and yet, and yet, and yet, uh, there are pastors who, they will condemn me for what I just said. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not stupid. We are not ignorant. The Bible says, I will not that ye should be ignorant. We're not to be like our fathers. We're to be wise. Don't let politics govern your life. Don't let politics govern your spiritual life. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to challenge the man in the White House. You have the man to challenge. You have the right to challenge those people in Congress. You have the right to challenge. You have the right to question. You have the right to read your scripture. And when your scripture shows you that what your pastor is, not, is preaching is not right, or what the president is saying is not right, then why should you continue? Why should you continue to be loyal to that person and do everything that person says do? That is why this nation is messed up right now. You've got half of the leaders in Congress in his hip pocket and half of the leaders in Congress following somebody else and those that alternative is just as worse just as bad uh even worse uh the alternative choice is to kill babies uh uh to to commit fornication uh uh to to hate and to to hate others and ladies and gentlemen so we're living in a world system where uh, if you follow one person, you're going to get messed up. If you follow another person, you're going to get messed up. But then we got these pastors saying, uh, well, the Bible says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render unto God that which is God. And, and so they have made an idol of that man in the White House. And, and so everything coming out of their mouths, they're putting down, they're blaming everything on the Democrats. And then the Democrats or blaming everything on the Republicans, and so we have a, a standoff in this nation, and, and nobody's listening to God. They're preaching from God's word, and they're using God's word to, to uh, strengthen their stand, and they're fixed on things, but God is looking for people whose hearts are perfect toward him. That's Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. You may say, well, I don't want to be unpopular. I don't want to be unliked. I don't want to lose my following on Facebook. I don't want to use, lose my following on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, ladies and gentlemen, Forget about YouTube. Forget about Facebook. Forget about people who like you and don't like you. Follow Jesus. Follow the Word of God. Well, I don't want to be politically incorrect. I don't want to be isolated. Ladies and gentlemen, I would rather be isolated than to follow this 
political rhetoric that is leading people straight to hell. And America is heading to hell quickly, more quickly than we think. Jackie Fisher is having dreams. Others are having dreams. Jesus is coming back soon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for people to wake up, wake up. And yet we have people every morning, every Sunday morning, they rush off the church. They, it's like an, it's an idolatrous, ladies and gentlemen. They've got to be sitting in that pew at 11 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning. And if they're not, and they will run over people in the parking lot uh, to get to their seat in the pew at 11 o'clock because it's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. They're not there to worship God. They're there to hear the choir sing. They're there to hear what's co going to come out of their pastor's mouth about uh, the next uh, uh, the Halloween party or the Christmas party or the Thanksgiving dinner, and they're not there to worship God. Ladies and gentlemen, God is going to do something about this Jackie Fisher, and he's going to do something quickly. We're in for an awakening, ladies and gentlemen. That is why, uh, Karen, God puts burdens on our hearts, and, and, and we've got to be true to God. This is not a, a popular ministry. Back to basics ministry is not a popular ministry. Why? Because we cannot be bought. We started poor. We'll probably end up poor, but we're reaching people for the nation. This is not your popular ministry. A lot of people don't want to come. Uh, they don't, there are people who are not even believe in the on online church. They would rather sit up in their brick-and-mortar church and hear what they're hearing, whatever comes out of their pastor's mouth, they buy it, they run with it, and, 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 uh, and many are going to these ethnic uh, churches and these racist churches, you know, the black church. And there are black people who won't even go to a white church. There are black people who won't even worship in a white church. There are black people who won't even uh, 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 say hello to a white Christian. And on the flip side, there are whites who won't even speak to a black Christian. There are whites who don't even want blacks in the churches. And, and the Asians, they don't want the Asians in. They don't want the Jews in. They don't want the uh, Hispanics in. They don't want the lesbians in. They don't want the gays in. And, and the gospel can deliver a lesbian, the gospel can deliver a gay, the gospel can deliver a, a, hate, a person, person full of hatred if the gospel is preached. But the problem is, Ryan, we've got a lot of pastors, they are afraid to preach the gospel. They are afraid. One of my best friends in this life, I asked him, why don't white preachers preach against racism? He said, Pastor Carter, they're not going to. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to be a preacher, preach. If you ain't going to preach, get off the pot. Get off, if you ain't going to get off the pot. Ladies and gentlemen, don't waste, why waste time calling yourself a preacher and you only choose what to preach? You select what to preach. You don't obey the Holy Spirit. You're afraid to preach against uh, homosexuality. Because you got homosexuals in your church. You're afraid to preach against lesbianism because you got lesbians in your church. You're afraid to preach against adultery because you're committing adultery. You're afraid to preach against fornication because you're committing fornication. You're afraid to preach against uh, 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 racist politics in Washington, D.C. because you're a Republican you're a de or a Democrat. Ladies and gentlemen, time is going to come where God is going to separate the tares from the wheat. I'm just going to say that again. The time is going to come when God is going to separate the tares from the wheat. And it's going to be mighty good to be on the Lord's side. Well, Pastor Carter, you kind of fired up today. Yes, I'm fired up. I told you I couldn't get to sleep last night, Karen, because I got this burden on my heart. Well, we're going to talk about idolatry part three, and then next week we'll finish up with idolatry in the church part four. But uh, it's time for us to repent, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the church to repent. Who is the church? You and I. It's time for us to repent. Now, if you're, if you're uh, I, I, I said Jackie Fisher is one of the quietest people in the, in, in the world, yeah, but she's not afraid to speak up. You want to get on, you, you mess with Jackie Fisher, and when she put the word of God on you, you're in trouble. Uh, but there are people who are afraid to speak up. They hear the word of God, 
but they're afraid to speak the word of God. Don't be afraid to speak the word of God when it comes to the truth versus the untruth, whether you're looking at CNN or ABC or CBS or 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 whatever when it comes to uh, discerning the truth because there's a lot of fake news out there there's a lot of fake news coming from pulpits you've got to have the discernment of the Holy Ghost that is why the Bible says and be not drunk with wine and which is excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit it's time for the church to repent ladies and gentlemen the church has caused a lot of people to get hurt the church has played a major role in this uh, dichotomy that's happening in America, in this uh, standoff in America. The church, the church, I'm talking about church leaders. I'm talking about well-known pastors. I could call some names, but I'm not going to call any names. But I can see about 100 of them right now. I can see about 100. I can name about 100 big-name pastors who have crossed over to the dark side because they are. Uh, have have bought into this money thing. You know, the government gives them money. The government supports them. Government keeps them on the air. So they're not going to say anything against the government. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says we are to obey those who have the rule over us, for they watch over our souls. But if the government is not watching over your soul and the government government is spewing and preaching hatred and racism, then that is not good government. George III found that out. That is not good government. When in the course of human events, uh, there comes a time to overthrow, throw off the government, then you've got to throw it off. Because if the government is not for, of the people, for the people, by the people, it is not good government. We get this from the scripture. The Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. The Bible says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God." But if Caesar is not uh, promoting the, 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 the will of God and, and, and you have a choice of either obeying Caesar or obeying the will of God, it pays to obey the will of God. I would rather obey the word of God than to obey men. That is scripture. But we've got a lot of people who call themselves Christians who are afraid to make that stand who are afraid they're afraid to separate they're scared they're they're scared for their jobs they're scared for their health they're scared for their livelihood but ladies and gentlemen hey look here look here look here look here when the lord came into my life on july 20th 1969 the very day that man walked on the moon that's the day jesus walked into my life i died i died ladies and gentlemen my life is no longer my own, Dustina. I do not have charge over my life. I gave my life to Jesus, and he gave his life to me. I laid down my life, ladies and gentlemen, and he uh, uh, gave me new life. I was born again. I died in 1969, and I came alive again that same moment when Jesus Christ came into my life. So my life is not my own. Christian, your life is not your own. If you've been born again by the Spirit of God, your life is not your own. Well, praise God, I want to take a look at some of the things happening in the church, just a few things, and then we'll finish this up next week. Some symptoms of idolatry today in the church. Let's take a look at some symptoms of idolatry. You want to know if you're in an idolatrous church? Well, I'm going to share some things with you. Don't beat up the postman. Just take these things, and if you have to say ouch, say ouch. And, and, and after you say ouch, make the correction. Repent. Immoderate respect or love given to a physical human being or religious organization. Unordinary respect or love given to a physical human being or religious organization. Pastor so-and-so said it's all right to do this, so I do it. Now the Bible says thou shalt not commit adultery. But Pastor so-and-so says, hey, look, your wife ain't treating you right. You need to have something on the side. That's because Pastor so-and-so got something on the side. 
But you know what? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Georgia, there's an outbreak of AIDS. They thought they had AIDS conquered 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And this AIDS epidemic is back, and it's going to be worse than ever before. Why? Because people have turned their backs against God. You've got more lesbianism, more homosexuality now, same-sex marriage than ever before. It's just the beginning of an outbreak. Minister so-and-so says it's all right for a man to marry a man. In fact, he married two men, or he married two women. Minister so-and-so says it's all right. The church says it's all right. And when the church says it's all right, then the government says it's all right. It's all right to have uh, same-sex partners uh, in Pennsylvania and Georgia and South Carolina and Maryland. It's all right. And the pastor says it's all right. The church says it's all right. But God says it ain't right. Come on, somebody. God said it's not right. A man shall leave his mother and father and take unto him a wife. Not another man, a wife. So give an immoderate respect or love to a physical human being or religious organization. It is called idolatry. Let's look at denominations. My denomination says it's all right. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. I'm Episcopalian. And my denomination uh, promotes same-sex marriage. My denomination, they met, the leaders, the bishops met, and they said it's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that judgment is going to come on those bishops and on that denomination. God said it ain't right. And so what is idolatry? Idolatry is making a God out of any person or organization or thing other than God. In other words, idolatry is obeying anything other than God. Idolatry is anything respecting other people or other things over God. God said in his word, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. That's in the word. That's in Exodus chapter 20. Those are the first two commandments. Jackie Fisher read our word today. Verse 11 through 14 of 1 Corinthians. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 10. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. If you think you're standing on solid ground and you're doing things that are ungodly, you better be careful because you're going to fall. There have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will also, along with the temptation, here make a way of escape. There is no temptation, no difficulty, no challenge, no issue that you cannot overcome. Other people have met those same temptations, but God has given us the grace and the mercy and the strength to overcome. He will make a way of escape. I say to those who are homosexuals, you don't have to remain a homosexual. God, the Holy Ghost, can deliver a homosexual. You don't have to remain a lesbian. You don't have to be married, woman, to another woman. No, that's because you choose, and, and yes, even your church says it's all right, and you go to a gay church, but that church is wrong. The church is wrong, as wrong as a, a difference between night and day. The Word of God says it's an abomination. Oh, I hate you, Leroy Carter, for what you preach. I don't care if you hate me. Keep on hating, but I preach the gospel, and I do not take down. You offended me. So what if I offended you? I preach the gospel. The gospel must offend. We all must be offended. If we're not offended, then we don't repent. The gospel is to offend. The gospel is sharp and powerful like, any, like a two-edged sword. It cuts and divides asunder and puts asunder, the, divides the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow and is a, a, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, I'm not going to follow you anymore. Well, follow, keep on following who you follow. I don't need you to follow me. I, I did not 
start preaching for you to follow me. I preach because Jesus Christ delivered me from a world of sin. He delivered me from adultery. He delivered me from fornication. He delivered me from lying. He delivered me from stealing. He delivered me from sin. And I owe my life to him, ladies and gentlemen. I owe my life to no politician saved me, no president, no white person, no black person, nobody saved me. Jesus saved me, ladies and gentlemen, and I owe my allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he called me to preach the gospel. Well, you keep on preaching like this, you're going to pay a price. Well, I have to pay that price. I'll pay the price. Others have paid the price before me. I'll pay the price. The Bible says there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. That 14th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from it. Flee from it. Well, let's look at some other <coughs> forms of idolatry. If in your church you're hearing this, God will take care of the problems in church leadership. He'll correct them if they're wrong. Now, you know your pastor's wrong. You know the deacons are wrong. You know oh, they're whoremongers. You know they're greedy. You know the trustees or the stewards are stealing the money. But you don't say a thing. You just look at it. You don't say a thing. You just blink your eye at it. God will take care of them. No, you ought to open your big mouth and say, hey, this is wrong. It, uh, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not do this, ladies and gentlemen. And there are millions of you. You sit in church every Sunday. You clap your hands when the choir sings. You say amen when the preacher preaches. And you blink your eye at sin. You're sitting next to a whoremonger. He's uh, cheating on his wife every Saturday night, and you sit next to that person every Sunday. No, the Bible says you ought to come out from among them. Stop supporting what they're doing. And if you, if you continue to be mum and not say a word, you're just part of the problem. Well, preacher, you're preaching today. Recognizing sins in church leadership, but afraid to say something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it did not take me long after I was born again to get on the bad side of my pastor. My pastor was greedy for money. Plus, my pastor was a homosexual. He liked men. He liked little boys and grown men. But he could not make a faggot out of this preacher. No, I was not going to be a faggot. I was not going to be one of his boys. No, you, if you're a man, you don't put your hands on me. You put your hands on me, I will knock you out cold. I still have strength enough to knock you out cold. No man touches me. And I let him know that. And it wasn't long before uh, uh, I was invited to leave the church, and I was glad to leave. Recognizing um, if you have a minister saying, I will lead you into the kingdom of God. No, 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 he can't. No preacher can lead you into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit must take you into the kingdom of God. Preacher can preach the word, and you can believe the word. It's the Holy Spirit who baptizes you into the body of Christ. Fearing to openly disagree with church teachings. That's idolatry. If you're afraid to uh, disagree with op with openly with church teachings. You know those teachings are wrong. Any teaching that's contrary to the word of God is idolatrous, ladies and gentlemen. Any word that you hear that is contrary to what's written in Scripture, I don't care how, whose mouth it comes from, it's idolatrous. And many of you are sitting under idolatrous, idolatrous teachers every week. Here's another one. Idolatry. We're going to really get, we're going to, hey, you think this is something, you wait till next week. Keeping quiet, so, <laughs> Ryan, wait till next week. Keeping quiet so you can maintain fellowship, all the while knowing things are wrong. You're not going to say anything because you don't want to lose the fellowship. These are your friends. You've been in church with them for 30 years. You don't want to rub them the wrong way, so you're not going to say anything. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen or staying in a corrupt organization for the sake of relatives. You keep going to that church because mama went there, grandmama went there, great-grandmama went there, 
great great grandmama went there. This is our family church, and 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 those sins have been perpetuated to the third and fourth generation, and you keep on going. That's idolatry. You're going to an idolatrous church. Or to stay in a church because you want to be an example for the weaker brothers or sisters. You're strong in the Lord, but you want to be a, an example for the weaker brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, you will die trying to change them because they don't want to change. They have the same opportunity to grow in Christ as you. But if they choose not to grow, if they choose to stay weak, if they still choose to commit fornication, if they choose to stay in adultery, if they, uh, if they continue, you know, to stay in, they're playing the lottery, they're playing bingo, uh, they're gambling in the church, they're lying, they're stealing. If they, if that's the, what they choose to live in, then why are you staying there? Come out from among them. The member who knows it all. Oh, 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 oh. The member who knows it all and won't listen to the minister, won't listen to any other brother or sister's point of view. He has an unteachable spirit. He's an idol to himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we know a lot of people who know them all. I can name about a million people right now. They know everything. You can't teach them any. I know a lot of pastors like that. You can't teach them diddly squat. They know it all. And, 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 and a lot of them have large followings. Large, and they will put you down. They will humiliate you. It's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. Sermons geared up to, oh, oh this is, a, this is pre prominent. Sermons gearing up to people to support the work, support this cause. Support this issue. Stay in the body. Don't leave the flock. Instead of giving people spiritual principles showing them how to live a godly life, they make most of their sermons are geared to keeping you in that fold. They don't want you leaving that fellowship. Now, your eyes have been opened. You know that that is hypocrisy going on. Uh, just like uh, in, in, in politics today, you know that uh, there are liars in this Republican Party. You know there are liars in this Democratic Party. You know there are liars in the White House and in Congress, but yet you keep on supporting them. You keep on, and, and you will fight. You will fight. You will fight your neighbor. You will fight somebody in your house if they talk about Donald Trump. You will fight somebody in your house if they talk about uh, Nancy Pelosi. You will fight like a dog. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. A church where a single head minister has absolute control, that's idolatry. If, 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 if you allow one person to control the whole ministry, that you are worshiping an idol. Let me just close up with a few more, then we're going to get deeper. It's going to get deeper next week. I hope you'll tune in next week. I hope you'll invite others to tune in next week. A church that was incorporated for the purpose of legalizing contributions as tax deductions. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an idolatrous church. You don't have to organize a church to legalize tax uh, deductions. Uh, in America, you can get uh, uh, tax deductions without having to incorporate. Okay? A religious group which imposes directly or indirectly the manners, customs, dress, and tastes upon its followers. They tell you how to dress. They tell you what to eat, what not to eat. Uh, uh, and, 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 and they tell you when to assemble and, and, and everything they do. You've got to be there. You've got to do it. That's why dollar, just ladies and gentlemen. And this one, we are finished with this one. Failure to read the Bible for yourself but depending on someone else's sermon or someone else's knowledge to keep you going. Failure to read the Bible for yourself, but you're depending on what Reverend so-and-so says or Pastor so-and-so or Prophet so-and-so. And, and, and here's what uh, irks me about a whole lot of people, especially in America. you got to tune in the Prophet. Uh, Prophet so-and-so, you've got to be online with Prophet so-and-so every day while Prophet so-and-so reads you the latest news events. Ladies and gentlemen, that prophecy may not be the word of God, and everything you're hearing may not be news. A lot of it's fake news. 
but you got to be online with prophet so-and-so every day. I know that's going to grab a lot of you. Okay? Prophet so-and-so ain't reading his Bible. Prophet so-and-so ain't praying. How can he pray? He doesn't have time to pray. He's so busy researching, trying to find out uh, how many earthquakes are taking place in, in the Pacific or how many earthquakes are taking place in Europe or how many volcanoes are erupting. And, and, and he's feeding that or she's feeding that, and you think you're getting gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to read the Bible for yourself. Humble yourself before the Lord. I need to do the same thing. Let us humble ourselves before the Lord. Let us return unto the Lord. Let us repent. It's time to repent. It's time for the church to repent. It's time for America to repent. God is not deceived, ladies and gentlemen, nor is he mocked. Let us repent now before it's too late. Now, I know there are a lot of haters out there, and you'd like to jump on me right now, but I ain't going to give you any opportunity. Keep on hating. I pray that you'll, you'll repent and, and get the love of Jesus in your, in your life, ladies and gentlemen. And if you hate me, it's all right. Jesus said, hey, if anyone will come after him, we must suffer persecution. We must suffer persecution. No one wants to endure persecution, but I would rather follow Jesus than to follow you. I would rather follow Jesus than have you like me or, or, or have you befriend me. Because if, if uh, you can like me one moment and dislike me the next moment, then the, the problem is not me. The problem is with you. The Bible says, therefore, let us be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's go back to the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he sin, take heed lest he fall. The Bible gives us the history. That's why I love the Old Testament so much. The Bible gives us the history of the Jewish people. And how God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and guided them through the wilderness. God said, when Israel was a child, I loved him. I took him by the hand and I guided him. But then Israel grew up and Israel forsook the very God who delivered them. And we're doing the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. We have this great history of how Israel fell, how Judah fell, how the nations of the world fell because they listen to their leaders rather than to listen to God. The nation of Israel, the, of the ten tribes of the north, they had 20 kings. Not a one, not a single king of Israel was a good king. They were all corrupt. The nation of Judah had uh, less than 20 kings. Most of them were corrupt. There were only a few kings who obeyed the Lord God and humbled themselves and led the people in revival. Ladies and gentlemen, why can't America wake up and study this word of God and repent and not commit the sins that we see that Israel committed? God has given us a record, ladies and gentlemen. All these things happen. For examples to us, he says in that 11th verse, let us take these examples. Let us honor God. Let us worship God. Let us forsake our sins. Let us return to God. Let us repent. Let us turn from our wicked ways and worship the mighty God. Don't hate the preacher. Be glad that God sends a word of correction. Be glad that God has a word of correction. And then take that word. And let that word dwell richly in your heart. And then repent. Repent. Turn from it. If you've got to get out of your church and go to another church, go. Don't just stay there. Don't just lay there like a pig lying in its slop. Don't just stay there and, like a dog eating his own vomit. You don't have to remain there. Nobody's got a hold on you. Break loose. Ask the Lord to move you out of that place so that you can grow in a place where he have you to grow. I praise God that this online church is a place.
where you can grow. And God's going to raise up many online churches to lead people. The day is coming where Americans are going to have to worship in caves and on the hillside and holes in the ground. So this online church is a forerunner of what's going to happen in America. Ladies and gentlemen, you may as well get ready. But most of all, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Turn on for the sake of your posterity, for the sake of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, future generations. 200 years from now, when people ask, what happened to America? What are your great-great-great-great-grandchildren going to say about you? What stand did you take? Did you choose to believe the politicians, and did you go down the tube with them? Or did you choose? Your great-great-great-great-grandchildren are going to ask questions about you. Or did you choose to obey the Lord Jesus Christ? This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm so glad you allowed me to come into your house today, into your home. I'm glad that the Word of God is coming to your heart. Read for yourself 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Read the whole chapter. Flee from idolatry. Flee. Run from it. Next week, we're going to take a closer look. You're going to see some stuff in the church, even in you, even in me, that should not be, and you're going to have to make a choice. Now, if I don't see you next week, it's because I know you, you, didn't, want, you didn't like that warning. But stay tuned next week. Tune in next week so we can get delivered. Father God, I praise you and bless you and honor you and thank you, Lord God. We worship you. You are holy. You are mighty. You are righteous. Bless the people. Bless this nation. Bless the church. We have sinned against you. Bless our leaders. We have sinned against you. Bless America and the nations. Help us to repent and turn from every sinful way and help us to declare Jesus Christ as Lord and to obey him. Help us to obey your word, and we thank you. Father, if, there any, is there, if there's anyone... Uh, listen to the sound of my voice, whether it is by, by live broadcast or by the recording, and they're not saved, I ask that you'll save them. If there's anybody who's uh, uh, been convicted of sin in their life and they didn't realize they were sinning, ask, I ask that you'll help them to repent, Lord God, and to call upon you for grace and mercy. Grant them grace and mercy, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you, Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say amen. Well, hallelujah. We're going to stop our recording. And if there's anyone who wants to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me. You can contact me by way of email or Facebook or YouTube or give me a call at 770-559-9711.